All right, in this video, we're going to look at a related rates problem. So uh, we've got a 20-foot ladder. It's being pulled away from, from the wall at a rate of 5 feet per second. We want to know what's the rate of change in the area beneath the ladder when the ladder is 8 foot from the wall. So maybe let's make a little picture here to try to uh, clarify. So OK, so I'm going to make my diagram. So here's the wall, and there's the ground. And there's going to be our nice little ladder. OK, so in this problem, um, we're going to, I'm going to label a few things, OK? So I'm thinking, uh, you know, as time progresses, right, so the, the bottom of this ladder is sort of sliding out, and the top is sliding down, uh, we're, eventually we're interested in this area. But before we do that, I want to think about which of these lengths vary with respect to time uh, so that I have to give them a variable. Well, certainly the, the height that the uh, ladder is up the wall, that's going to vary with time. So I'm going to label that with a variable, and I'll call it h for height. Um, likewise, the, uh, you know, the distance that the base of the ladder is away from the wall, as time progresses, since it slides out, that's also going to vary. So I'm going to label that with another variable. I'll call it b. Well, notice, though, that the, uh, you know, the length of the ladder, that's not going to change. So don't give that a variable. We're just going to label that with 20, because it's going to stay constant. So they say the ladder is being pulled away from the wall at a rate of 5 feet per second. So which one of these two variables is changing at a rate of 5 feet per second? Well, if they're pulling it away, there it would be the, um, you know, the, the base. So we can say that the change in the base with respect to time. I'm going to leave the units off. I'm going to be a little, um, a little imprecise here, because um, eventually all we do is plug in the numbers anyway. I will pick the units up back at the end. We want to figure out what's the rate of change in the area. Okay, so we want to figure out the change in the area with respect to time. And we want to do that um, when the ladder is 8 feet from the wall. So, okay, if the ladder's 8 feet from the wall, that's when b would equal 8. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to, um, I'm going to think, you know, what's the area of this triangle generically? Well, the area of a triangle is just one-half its base times its height. Okay, now, if we started taking a derivative immediately, if we started taking a derivative immediately, um, we would have to use the product rule. We would have to use implicit differentiation. Uh, when we did that, we would end up getting a db dt at some point, which is great. On the left, we would have da dt, which is fine. That's what we're looking for. But notice we would get a dh dt as well. And there's no sort of dh dt information over here. So to me, since there's no dh dt information, what that to me tells me is it says try to eliminate try to eliminate the h from the equation. Okay, well now I think, hmm, I need another relationship between the base and the height. And well, I think we can do this here, uh, you know, assuming obviously the ground's level and the wall's straight up. Um, we can assume that this is a nice little triangle. So also we would have the relationship that, well, by Pythagorean theorem, b squared plus h squared would equal 20 squared. Or equivalently, and again, I'm going to solve for h, so we'd have h squared equals 20 squared, which is going to be 400 minus b squared. And then we can take the square root of both sides. Um, again, normally we get positive and negative solutions. Here we're just going to need the positive solution because clearly the height has to be a positive value. So now I'm just going to plug that back in for h. So again, the area of the triangle, it says that's going to be 1 half the base times the height. But again, I'm going to replace the height with this expression the square root of 400 minus b squared. All right, so now we're in a nice position to, to be able to start taking derivatives using implicit differentiation. And then we can throw in all of our information, and I think uh, we should be in, uh, in business. The first thing I'm going to do uh, 
is just rewrite this as b times, well, 400 minus b squared to the 1 half. Again, I like to see the exponent. Reminds me we have to do the chain rule when I take the derivative. Okay, so now we're going to take the derivative with respect to time of both sides. Okay, so we, again, we have to remember to use implicit differentiation here. So on the left, the derivative of 1a would just be 1, well, dA dt. That would equal 1 half. Okay, so now we'll have to use the product rule on the inside. So the derivative of 1b would just be 1 dB over dt. We'll leave the 400 minus b squared to the 1 half alone. And then by the product rule, we would have plus. Now we could leave the b alone. Uh, we would have to do the chain rule as well, so the 1 half would come out front. We would leave the 400 minus b squared alone, take 1 away from the exponent, so that will give us negative 1 half. And then the derivative of the inside would be negative 2b, but again we have to tack on this db over dt term. So let me squeeze in my bracket. Okay, so now I think uh, we almost have everything that we need, I don't think there's actually anything missing. Um, you know, again, uh, we're trying to figure out dA dt, so that's okay. We've got a value for dB dt. We know we want to do this when uh, our value of b equals 8. So now I'm just going to start plugging all that stuff in. So dB over dt is 5, and b equals 8, and then we'll just see what we get here. Maybe before I do that, I'll try to simplify it a little bit here. Um, so we've got one half. We've got db dt. Uh, you know, we could rewrite this, I guess, as a square root if we want to. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. So the square root of 400 minus b squared. Let's see our next term. We've got a, a positive times a negative, so that'll make a negative. The one half and the two would cancel. We have b times b, so that would be b squared. Uh, we can put our 400, 400 minus b squared to the negative 1 half back in the denominator. And that would be 400 minus b squared to the positive 1 half. And again, uh, since it's to the 1 half, we're taking a square root. And again, we're multiplying that by db dt. So now I'm just going to start plugging in my values, and uh, eventually we'll just have our solution for dA dt. So it says we take 1 half db dt, which is 5. And then we would multiply that by 400 minus b squared, so 8 squared. And then minus, okay, so again, b squared will be uh, 8 squared over the square root of 400 minus 8 squared. And again, our db dt term has a value of 5. So now we'll see what this gives us. All right, so it says dA over dt. That's going to be 1 half times 5. Well, let's see. Uh, 400, this will be 400 minus 64, right? So 400 minus 64 underneath our square root. So I believe that's going to give us 336 minus, okay, so let's see. We've got 8 squared again, which is 64. So 64 times 5 in the numerator, that'll give us 320. Again, in the denominator, we have 400 minus 64. We have the square root of that, which will give us 336. I don't think the 336 is a nice square root. Definitely not. That's OK. Um, so now we'll start approximating a little bit. I've got the square root of 336. I just plugged it into a calculator. Um, I've got that to be roughly 18.33. So now it's just, you know, calculator stuff, really. So 1 half, let's see, so 5 times 18.33, that's 91.65. Let's see, 320 divided by 18.33, that's giving me 17.46 after rounding up a little bit. So if we do 91.65 minus 17.46, that's going to give us just 
that looks all right to me. Um, so now if we take one half of that, I'm getting it that dA dt is going to equal 37 point, I've got 0, 0,95. Again, maybe we can round that. So we can say 37.10. That would be the change in the area with respect to time. So again, since area, uh, I think, let's go back to our units. I think we were doing, let's see, so it was 5 feet per second. So this would be the change in area. So we would say the change in area is 37.10 uh, feet per second squared. Or excuse me, uh, I'm thinking about uh, derivatives again, about uh, acceleration. It says the change in area with respect to time would be 37.10. Okay, feet squared, right? It's area, so the feet need to be squared per second. That looks a little bit better. Got my exponents backwards. So, okay, so again, you know, kind of tricky, I think, a little bit. Um, you know, hopefully it's not too bad here. You, you have to label what you know. This is kind of a common trick sometimes. You'll, you'll set up your picture generically, and, uh, you know, if you were to take a derivative immediately, there would be, again, you know, if we took the derivative right at the, the get-go of this problem, Again, we would pick up a dH dt, and I'm just not sure, you know, what value you would plug in for dH dt. So when I recognize that, that again tells me there's got to be some way to sort of get rid of that variable, um, just so we can turn it back into an equation uh, involving only one variable. And then we're just off taking derivatives, again, kind of a, a sloppy little derivative and just sloppy little arithmetic at the end. Um, but again, hopefully not too bad. Again, I think related rate problems are tricky. So hopefully this one made some sense for you.